Okay, so let's have a look. How does WAP work? Let's say the sender Alice wants to transfer a message to receiver Bob. Fine. Okay. Of course, secure message. Scenario, Alice wants to send a message to Bob over a VLAN connection. Fine. Okay. Let's say well, how we're going to do that. First of all, we have KAB. This is the key. Must be shared between Alice and Bob. Okay, 40 bits. Just 40 bits. Okay, the key length that we are using is 40 bit in WEP, actual key length. But I have to add 4 bit initialization vector, concatenate them, you have 64 bit per packet key. 64 bit per packet key. But don't forget, this KAB must be shared before doing anything. Okay, before doing anything. Because I'm going to use this one and this one to generate the RC4 key. To generate the RC4 key. That is prime uh, seed or random number generator. That is my RC4 algorithm. Okay? And CRC32, that's integrity check value. Okay, so let's have a look. Alice is over there. Bob is right here. Okay? And you see, Alice and Bob must have KAB before doing anything. Okay, before doing anything. And then Alice has the message. Alice is going to say that I'm going to encrypt this message. Okay, but before encryption, I have to calculate the ICV value by using CRC32. Right? And that's ICV. That's going to be appended to the message. Plain text. Plain text right now is message and ICV. Fine. And then by using the IV right here. Okay. We, we haven't done any encryption right now. We are getting ready for encryption. We have the plain text right now. Plain text is your message and the ICV. But I have to create the key by using RC4 for encryption. This CRC32 is calculating the integrated check value, ICV, for integrity. Okay, for integrity. But I, I need the key right now. So I have to call the RC4 to generate the key by using this 40, 40 bit and 24 bit. Right? Okay. ICV is right there. Okay. And then KAB right there. It goes to see the random number generator, which is RC4. And the result of this one is my RC4 key string. That is the, this key right here that I'm going to use. Now, I'm going to use this key XOR with plain text. And output of this XOR is my ciphertext. That's it. So when you have laptop connection, wireless connection, and when you do the configuration to web, okay, you are doing this. You are doing this. That's it. You are using RC4, but it's, it's going to ask this key. You're going to enter that key. Okay, you're going to enter that. That's it. But the other side must have the same key. Don't forget that one. Okay? Otherwise, the other side is not going to work. Okay. If you look at the plain text, plain text is message plus ICV. So when I encrypt that one, I'm actually encrypting the message and ICV. So in other words, ciphertext has the encrypted version of ICV. IV is initially right here, but in the ciphertext right here, it's going to be in the plain text form. It is not encrypted at all. So I'm showing that IV is going to be in plain text, must be sent to, the, to Bob, to the receiver. So in other words, Alice and Bob must share KAB and IV. But IV is going to come as a plain text on top of the ciphertext. Okay, on top of the ciphertext. Okay? What else? So the, I'm transmitting the ciphertext. And right now, receiver received the ciphertext. So what are we going to do? Let's have a look. By using KAB and IV, because right now it recovered the IV. Okay, from there. IV is in clear form. It received the IV. So it has IV. It has KAB. It's going to call the CDO random number generator, which is RC4 to generate the RC4 key stream. 
XOR that one cipher text with this RC4 result is going to be message plus ITV. Let's have a look. It's going to be plain text. This plain text is actually message and ICV. So from that message, I'm going to calculate CRC32 again. Okay. And the result is going to be ICV. I have ICV over here. I have recalculated ICV over here. If this ICV and this ICV is the same, there is no error. But if they are not same, if they are not same, or if they are not identical, then there is an error. So that I am not going to accept this one. Basic software security requires confidentiality, requires integrity, requires authentication, and requires non-repudiation. Okay? And also, we, you, may, you may say that available. There are five major security services. Confidentiality provided by encryption. Okay? Encryption is going to provide you confidence. Fine. Integrity. ICV provides integrity. Authentication. Exactly. They are sharing the secret key. That comes as an authentication because we know that only these two parties have the, have the key. We don't have any other authentication mechanism. Okay. But before communicating, how do you know that you are communicating with Bob? Right? That's the other question. Okay, before sending the KAB, how do you know that you are communicating with Bob? It requires an extra authentication. We will see that this, uh, this protocol has extra authentication scheme anyway. But when, when we are done with the KAB, then you can say that this has authentication because these guys have shared secrets. Okay? One, what about non-repudiation? We don't have it. Maybe we don't need it anyway over here. What about availability? We don't need it again over here. So in other words, right here we are having confidentiality with the encryption, integrity with the ICV calculation, and sharing the keys will provide us authentication. Okay? Will provide us authentication. So every time when we look at this kind of security protocols, we're going to look at those five services. Confidentiality, authentication, integrity, non-reputation and availability. Okay? Non-reputation is going to come most of the time with the digital signatures. If you don't have digital signatures, you are not going to have non-reputation. Okay? Do we have any idea what non-reputation is? Hmm? Non-reputation is this. You are not going to be able to deny that you didn't receive this ciphertext. Okay? And she's not, she's not going to be able to deny that she didn't send that cipher text. Both ways. I received, let's say that this cipher text says that it is an army order, go and take this hill. Okay? But hey, I know that that's going to be very dangerous. I mean, most probably I'm going to get killed. I will say to my commander, who is Alice, by the way, that I didn't receive your message. That's why we didn't go and that, take, that till, uh, the, the, take that hill. Okay? So I can deny it, but I'm going to be in a position that I'm not going to be able to deny it. That is now repetition. Or this guy, commander, he sent this message, he said that go and take this hill, but he, but he caused huge amount of the problems. Maybe we lost the war because of that one. And now his head is under something. And he says, that, no, I didn't send that one. Most probably somebody sent it. And those guys went there and they tried to take, take that hill. Okay. So, well, but we're going to have a mechanism that the Alice will not be able to deny that she or he didn't send that, that mail or that, that command, that ciphertext, basically. That's called non-repudiation. Okay. And then it, it is required for most of the applications right now. Okay. But for this wireless thing, say, it is not important. We're going to send encrypted email to your friend. Whether you deny it or she deny it, it doesn't matter. Right? It's not a big deal. You are not sharing or you are not transmitting a very big secret. Okay, very big secret. All right. So those services are going to be important for us. And if you look at web, web protocol, okay, we have some sorts of skirts. Okay. RC4 is a good algorithm. Nobody managed to break it so far. Okay. And this whole setting is not bad. We just saw that CRC may be a little bit problem. Okay. 
And we said that for this type of stream ciphers, key must be purely random. Well, which is not true over here. And we said that this key may, uh, it will be never reuse it. Never ever. Once you're going to use it, that's it. But hey, this RC4 key stream is going to generate the same key after some periods because it is limited. So there will be some instances that maybe you are reusing the key. But if you are reusing the key, there is a chance that with the enough ciphertext collection, okay, people may break the algorithm. Guess what? They did it. They did it in Berkeley, right here, graduate students. With a very simple devices. Okay? And with very few messages, by the way. Because when they implemented this one, they, 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 they didn't put some conditions for the reuse of the key. It wasn't the algorithm that was weak, it was usage of the algorithm that was weak. Okay, and immediately they said web cracked. Okay, now we are not going to be web does not provide enough security. Well, that is true. It does not provide enough security right now. Key length, 40 bit is nothing. 40 bit in five minutes, you can check every possibility of the 40. Two to 40, two to 40 uh, possible keys available. So the range is very low. If you have one million microprocessor computer, with each, comp each microprocessor has one gigahertz clock speed, it does not take more than 10 minutes to search, more than 10 minutes to search all possible keys. That's why today's key sizes for this kind of algorithms is, what is the standard key size? 128 bits. 128. Over here, we are using 64 bit, but 24 is already in clear form. Only 40 bit is secret. So 40 bit is not enough. Okay, it's not enough. CRC is not enough to provide proper integrity. So you see, you, you immediately say, hey, this is not going to be the perfect solution. Okay, it has some weak points, some drawbacks, in other words. Okay? So those, those, those things has to change. And those changes are going to come in IEEE 8.0.11i protocols. Okay?